My dear friends in Christ, welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist for the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We continue to lift in prayer those whose lives have been so affected by Hurricane Ida that they might know relief and comfort and that they might receive that which they need. Let us encounter the Lord and place our hope and trust in Him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Peace be with you, so that we might together more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries. Let us acknowledge our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us be set the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violation of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord upholds my life. The Lord upholds my life. O God, by your name save me, and by your might defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer, hearken to the words of my mouth. The The Lord Lord upholds upholds my my life. life. For the haughty have risen up against me, the ruthless seek my life. They set not God before their eyes. The The Lord Lord upholds upholds my my life. life. Behold, God is my helper, the Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer you sacrifice. I will praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. The The Lord Lord upholds my life. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive, 
because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples left there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Oftentimes we see images of Jesus with small children. Perhaps it's a depiction of the gospel reading we have heard today. Multiple times in scripture, Jesus expresses his love for these little ones, and he has a particular concern for them. The image of being like a child can evoke a feeling of peace, a feeling of serenity. Imagining Jesus with the little children presents an atmosphere of calm, an atmosphere of peace. But when it comes down to it, when we bring Jesus' words into our own lived experience, being like a child is one of the hardest things that we as adults can do. Think about a child in relationship to the child's parents. A small child can do nothing or very little on their own. They depend completely on their parents for almost everything. Small children require almost constant supervision. They have a way of getting themselves into precarious situations. In one sense, they're really utterly almost helpless. On a certain level, that's nice for a kid. But when you or I, who are adults, are dependent on someone else for what we really need, when we feel powerless and helpless, when we find ourselves in a hard situation, needing assistance. We don't like that. I struggle with that as well. But that is exactly, my dear friends, where Jesus invites you 
and I to be. I don't think I'm alone in saying that many times over these past three weeks since Hurricane Ida, I have felt helpless. I don't know what to do. I don't know, didn't know, what would happen next. So much seems so completely outside of my control. I'm sure many of us have perhaps felt that way at some point in our lives, whether it's dealing with the after effect of Hurricane Ida or with something else. We don't like that helpless feeling, being dependent on another. When we find ourselves in those situations in life where we really don't have control, we do, my dear friends, at that point have a choice to make. One of two things is going to happen. We can either grasp for control or we can, like a child, surrender. The temptation that is all too easy to fall into is to grasp for control. We feel more secure when we are control. Perhaps we feel that there is an expectation that we are supposed to be in control. We would much rather be in control than experience the helplessness of being dependent and not in control. That temptation comes from the disordered desire that St. James speaks about in our second reading. The selfish ambition, the disorder that is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit, but is rather something that brings conflict, envy, jealousy, and division. When we find ourselves grasping for control, Peace rarely flows from that, but rather from that comes more anxiety and usually more fear. That is not God's desire for us, for you and for me. That is not what God wants us to experience. God does not desire us to be filled with anxiety or fear, to be weighed down by division and disorder. God's desire for us is that we experience the peace of his presence, the joy of his gaze. He wants us to receive these gifts of the spirit that St. James also writes about in our second reading, gentleness, mercy, and peace. And the key to receiving these gifts the key to God giving us these great gifts is to stop holding on and grasping at whatever it is that we are attempting to control. When we surrender, we become like a little child. And then, and only then, are our hands and our hearts finally open and able to receive the peace of the living God. When we let go, when we surrender, we make space for the peace of the Spirit to fill our hearts. This peace that comes not from ourselves, but from the knowledge and trust that God will provide whatever we need if only we let him the spirit of a small child who trusts completely in the parents who love the child. When we become like a little child, we allow God to be the good and loving father to us that he wants to be, the provident father who knows just what we need right here and right now. My dear friends, as an adult, it's hard to be like a child. 
It's, mu it's much easier, isn't it, to be like the apostles, the adults, arguing over who is the best and who is the greatest. We don't want to be small or little. We don't want to be out of control. We want to be in control, the greatest. But the grace of true surrender opens our hearts to allow God to work in incredibly powerful ways. No matter what happens, no matter what seems to be stacked against us, God is able to triumph for us and with us. What the wicked in the first reading think is a lie actually is true. No matter what comes our way, God will take care of us. He will defend us. He will journey with us. Nothing can stop the ultimate victory that he has promised to us. The Surrender Novena is a beautiful set of prayers that dispose our hearts to receive this kind of grace. I invite us all to take these words of that novena as our own, as we pray, and I quote, O oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Like a child, let us surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ, trusting in him even in challenging times knowing that he will guide us, he will lead us, and he will raise us up. Amen. As one family in faith, we profess the faith of our baptism. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like little children trusting in God's love for us, let us make known these areas of our need. For all the baptized in the church, may God strengthen us in proclaiming the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God bless them with the strength and wisdom in supporting policies that uplift families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn the loss of a loved one, may God's enduring love and mercy and the gift of faith bring them consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our midst who are struggling from the devastation of Hurricane Ida, may the Lord grant them relief and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they soon be brought to eternal peace with the Lord in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, may we be spared all loss of life and property during this hurricane season. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Two more personal intentions. Uh, my classmate in ordination, Father Jack Nutter, who's a priest of the Diocese of Baton Rouge, died recently, so I pray for Father Jack that the Lord will grant to him all that he promised to him in baptism and eternal life for his many years as a priest. A friend of mine, Frank Carmina, also died, so I asked the Lord to receive Frank into eternal life and to give consolation to his family and friends who mourn him. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, in you we place our hope and trust. Hear and answer us. For these and all things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we proclaim the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Jack, Father Jack and Frank, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. prayer for a spiritual communion. <clears throat> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually to my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us in this prayer that is the Eucharist. May God in his goodness continue to give comfort to those who are hurting and suffering. May the Lord bestow his hope upon us all. We are now three weeks out from Hurricane Ida. That's a small victory to celebrate. We continue to look for those small ways that God is bringing to fruition the seeds of hope that he has planted amongst us. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for all that you do to proclaim God's presence with us in these difficult days. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you now and always the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel with your life. Thanks be to God. God.